Hey, this is Annex, and I'm just going to give you a brief introduction of how you can use this cheat sheet on my website. So my website is annexproductions.eu, and the sheet I'm going to talk about is the note to frequency or pitch quick reference guide for conversion. So you'd want to use this if you're EQing or if you're mastering or doing something with the frequency spectrum where you need to convert uh, from frequency, so from the hertz that you see, uh, to the notes and the octave or the other way around. So if you know the note and the octave, you can find the frequency that it corresponds to and then make that change accordingly in your DAW. So it's important to note that there's two different standards that are used. So the one that's used in digital audio workstations, at least in Ableton or in Logic, is this one. So this is where A3 is 440 hertz. Uh, make sure you're using the right table, otherwise you'll be really confused like I was. So I have both on my website, but if you're working with music production, this is probably the one that you want to be using. Uh, the other one is an ISO standard, so it's an international standard that was harmonized from an American standard. Uh, and in that one, A4 is 440 hertz, and this, there is an explanation on the bottom of here. So just make sure you're using the right one. Okay, so I'll talk about first you have the notes up here. So notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Just they start from C here. And we have octaves on the left here. And the octaves in this standard version go from minus one to seven. And in the international standard version, uh, they go from zero to eight. So that's basically the only difference. Uh, but it makes a big difference when you're looking at a chart like this. Okay, so. I'll come back to that. Um, these in the middle here is Hertz. So Hertz are basically number of cycles per second. And I'll talk more about that in my tutorial because it's quite theoretical. Okay, uh, this is how the frequency uh, spectrum. So Hertz correspond to keys on a keyboard. So you're going from low frequencies in your bass to high frequencies in your treble clef and each of these frequencies can be mapped to a different note name. I think there's 82 or 86 notes on a typical keyboard, and this is what we see here. So the notes go from A0 all the way to C8, and the frequencies go from 27 and a half to about well, 4200. Uh, this MIDI number is not important unless you're making your own hardware, because any hardware you, an instrument you buy typically that's commercial is already mapped um, for the major uh, audio workstations, so you don't have to worry about these just more if you're making your own instruments or want to remap uh, the MIDI numbers, those are important to know. So in this, uh, so we mentioned this is with the academic standard, so this is the international standard, so we have note name here, A4, and then we go to the left and see, okay, A4 has a frequency of 440 hertz. Middle C with this standard is C4, and it has a frequency of 262 hertz. And a way that might make more sense to how you're used to seeing it, so I just rotated this to the right. So it's the same picture, just rotated to the right. So we have the bass on the left side and the treble on the right side. So we're going from low frequencies on the left to high on the right hand side. So now frequency is on our x axis. And when we go into Ableton, so this is the digital audio workstation that I use, uh, I'm looking at a note that I'm playing on a piano instrument. And when I play this C3 note on the piano, this is the frequency spectrum that comes out. So because I'm playing C3, the fundamental frequency is C3, and we see it peaking here. So this is the spectrum analyzer that looks at pitch in Ableton. There's also one that doesn't tell you uh, pitch on the x-axis, um, but you can look at that one too. So uh, this is the one in Ableton that doesn't look at pitch, but instead it looks at hertz on the x-axis. So either of these are the same as working with this, um, yeah, this diagram above. Just one is with pitch and one is with 
uh, frequencies, but because those correspond to each other, they're the same. Uh, here, the um, y-axis is the gain, so kind of uh, similar to the amplitudes. So we're seeing the loudest note here. So the notes with the most gain or with the highest higher amplitudes are hitting this pitch of C3. And if you look on the bottom uh, left of this um, image here, we see, okay, this is 261 hertz about, and it is C3. So in our uh, diagram above, so remember these are using different standards, <laughs> but if they weren't using different standards, um, so this C3 is equal to C4, and if we wanted to know what the frequency of that was, we would have to go up and look through here and find, okay, it's 261 hertz. Um, if you're analyzing a song and you don't know what uh, key you're playing, so what note you're playing, this gets a lot more complicated because you don't uh, have these notes to go with on the bottom, you just have this frequency to search through. So see here, I see peaks around here and then I find, okay, frequency is about 260 hertz. So Ableton tells you what note it is, <laughs> um, but if it doesn't tell you, uh, you have to go, okay, where do I see 261 hertz and find, okay, here is up here and then it's C4 and then and one octave lower or with another standard, it's C3 and that's the MIDI note that we're playing here. So that is a little time consuming and is also like more overwhelming than necessary because having all this information is not useful to you. Uh, so that's where the matrices come in handy. So if we go back to our matrix, uh, let's see how this works different in practice. So we have the same key play. Oops. Okay, and then we see here, okay, 263 hertz. Then we would want to know what is the note and what is the octave. So what is the pitch of that uh, that corresponds to it? So we can go up into our chart and find, okay, where is 266 hertz? Okay, that's about here. And with these, so the numbers aren't exact. I mean, they're rounded. So the frequencies can go to so many decimal places, I think maybe infinite, I'm not sure. I've seen them to like nine decimal places and that's just unusable. Uh, so here the numbers are rounded, but you're probably not going to need anything more specific than this, especially if you're just getting started with music production. And also when you're EQing, uh, it makes it pulls frequency bands. So you're not just pulling out this 262 hertz, you're pulling out um, the ones beside it just at different decibel levels, at different gain. So here we were wanting to know with the frequency of 262, which note and octave does that correspond to. So we found it here and then we go up. Okay, it corresponds to note C and we have octave three. So if you're playing in a DAW, that will be note C3 on your MIDI. If we had another notes playing, so here, this is a three that I'm playing in my DAW. We can go up. Okay, what's the point here? The highest um, yeah, peak here. And this is about 437 hertz and say we didn't know if this was a3 uh, we can go up and find okay where's 400 and what 37 hertz so that's about here so uh, we could say okay looking at this on our matrix up so we know this is the note a and going to the left this is a3 so this means you know if you see this frequency, 440 hertz, in your DAW with these spectrum analyzers, because we know they follow this standard, it means that the note that that creates is A3. And the standard is also um, the same as those used by FabFilter and I think a lot of the plugins that are used on the DAWs. So I hope this was useful for you. This will also be placed on YouTube if you saw it somewhere else. Uh, so if it's on YouTube, uh, leave me a comment to let me know if this helps you or what else you could uh, learn from this. I'll do a more in-depth tutorial about the theory behind this and hopefully how it relates to hardcore and Frenchcore music because uh, that's actually what I make. And in that tutorial, I'll go more in-depth into this. So thanks.